approximately eight of those uh, jur uh, excuse me, law enforcement agencies are also contributing to uh, this effort. Um, in 2020, uh, we investigated in excess of approximately 600 cases and made uh, close to approximately 400 arrests and uh, cleared out approximately 66% of those cases. Uh, we conducted uh, several search warrants and one of those search warrants actually netted approximately $100,000 worth of um, product uh, that we seized. Um, there is definitely, what we've seen over the last couple of years is definitely a nexus between um, some of the retail theft crimes, some of the violent crimes that are happening in the city of Charlotte. Um, I know for one that investigating these cases for the last couple of years, the, you know, we see a continuous pattern on the individuals that continue to commit these crimes and uh, some of their arrest histories that are involved in, in violent crime. Uh, with that said, not only um, is their arrest histories uh, proven that they are involved in other crimes throughout the city, but the the individuals continue to victimize our retailers and victimize the individuals that are working inside these establishments. Um, and you know, we've just seen throughout the years that uh, it's getting more aggressive and the suspects are becoming more aggressive towards uh, individuals that are working in these establishments. So what we're doing is we're, we're partnershiping with the district attorney's office um, and we are trying to find ways to hold these individuals accountable. Um, we had a, a good conversation a couple days ago with the district attorney's office for about an hour and they are on board with uh, our initiative. Um, and obviously the district attorneys have their challenges as well. We have a lot of cases in the city. Um, we have big city problems here and this is a big city now. So this, you know, to say that we're always gonna be in the land of milk and honey, I, I would be lying to you to, if I said that. So we're finding ways to combat some of these crimes and we're, I'm not gonna get into some of our um, techniques in doing that and some of our tactics in doing that. But what I can tell you is that we're out on the streets and we are, we are trying to do our best to, to solve these problems. Um, you know, what we're seeing also in some of these crimes is that the individuals that are involved in these crimes uh, also have substance abuse problems. Um, and we're trying to assist with uh, trying to um, get some of these individuals the help they need as well. So it's not, it's not just enforcement that, you know, we're trying to, to assist individuals in our, in our community as well. Um, the, again, I want to talk a little bit about um, how we have seen a nexus between our, our the individuals that are committing these crimes and some of the violent crimes. And what I can tell you is that uh, me personally, uh, I know that the information that we have gathered through uh, our, our investigations and the evidence collected uh, solved um, several different violent crimes, which include homicide. Um, so with that said, we are, we're gonna continue our effort and um, we're gonna try to find other ways uh, to help our retail partners they have been great in this initiative as well. Um, they have spent numerous uh, dollars on trying to increase some of their uh, video surveillance. They've put uh, numerous loss prevention officers inside their stores. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're a team. Are the citizens of this community are part of that team? And uh, the retailer, the retail community is part of that team. Um, so uh, with that said, is there any questions on my end? Thank you, I appreciate it. 